be looking at client-side validations. This is a process where you're informing the user of an issue with the form that they're filling out prior to actually submitting the form. So they will get instant and real-time feedback based on the data that they're filling out and they will be able to make changes appropriately. Client-side validations really starts to shine when we're working with AJAX models. This is where we have a button that has a remote true on it, so it will make an AJAX request back to the server, and the server will respond back, and we'll use some JavaScript to inject into a div tag a model, and then call that model to load. So if we were to fill out this form, we don't have any kind of clear direction on what our user should enter and what fields are necessarily required and what kind of validations we have on them. So it could be very confusing and also troublesome if you just try to submit the form without the validations happening on the client side. You really have two options of making this post to the form a remote true as well so it'll make an AJAX response back, but then you're creating a lot of extra code and it's just not gonna be very clean. The other way to handle this is to have a normal post where you just create your user and then it takes you to a separate page on the form. However, this could be very confusing, so I don't recommend doing this. So today we'll be looking at the client-side validations gem and we'll be using the Rails 5 branch. So to get started, add the client-side validations to your gem file, and make sure that you're pointing to the GitHub repository and you're selecting the Rails 5 branch. If you also are using simple form like I am here, you'll also want to add the simple form gem and point to the GitHub repository and select the Rails 5 branch. Make sure you bundle and restart your Rails application. And then in your console, you'll want to run the generator client-side validations colon install. And this will create an initializer file in your config initializers. Next, go ahead and run the generator for the client-side validations copy assets. Since we copy the assets, we won't have to include these in our Rails application in the application.js file. However, you will want to edit the rails.validation.js file and scroll down to the very bottom and on line 658, you'll want to change it from page load to TurboLinks load. And you'll only want to do this if you're running the latest version of TurboLinks and not version 2.5. And now we're ready to create some validations for our model. In our example, we'll make the first name and last name required fields so they have to be present. And then we'll make sure that the age of the user is between 18 and 125 years old. And if not, then it'll give the message must be 18 or older. So then in our form, we can simply call validate true on the simple form, and that's all we should have to do. Client-side validations will automatically generate all the necessary JavaScript to do the client-side validations. So at our form, if we start tabbing through, you'll see that it'll automatically give us the feedback that the field cannot be blank. As we fill this in, the error message disappears. And if we try to submit this without entering the age, which remember it has to be 18 or older, if we just submit our form, you'll see that it doesn't post back, but it automatically gives us a validation error. Next, let's look at how we can call a remote true or AJAX link to our controller, render a model, and then still have our client-side validations. So in this new user AJAX model, you'll see that I have remote true enabled here. And then in our new.js.erb file, I have an empty div with an ID of remote container, and I'm just populating this with a form model partial. And then whenever our model triggers the show bootstrap model, we're calling the function form validate, enable client side validations. And then we're triggering the model to show. And then in our form model partial, we have a model with a form model ID. And then we have our form. You'll see that I'm just calling validate true. So back in our application, we'll click on the new user model. We'll start filling out some of this information. We'll skip a few fields and you'll see that immediately it gives us the client-side validation errors. And if we try to submit our form, it doesn't submit. It gets interrupted because we still have some validation errors. Another cool feature of client-side validations is the callbacks. Based on the events that occur with your form, you have several different callbacks that you can use. So in our application.js file, I just created a couple of different callbacks. One if the element, so if one of the form fields failed, then we'll disable the submit button. If the element passes, 
then we will enable the submit button. Keep in mind that these element callbacks are pretty agnostic to the other form fields and a validation error on one of the other form fields may cause the form to act a little quirky. Well that's all for this episode. Thank you for watching. For more videos, check out driftandruby.com.